tonight we've gathered together for a story. In the world of Grey Bobby, this faithful puppy and his sister Betty the Bookworm venture out once more to learn all they can about the God who made them. Let's settle in for another bedtime devotional with Pastor Zach. One cold and crisp Saturday morning, Grey Bobby and Betty headed into town with Uncle Grey Billy for an after Christmas shopping trip. They had each gotten some money for Christmas and they were eager to spend it. I just saw in the toy store that they got a shipment of Destructico action figures. Super Sergeant Connor's mortal enemy. That's where I'm spending my money. I thought we'd go to the bookstore first. There's a new petal flowerfall book I want to get. It's a book of photographs of wildflowers from all over the world. Sounds boring. Hey, how about you go to the bookstore and I go to the toy store and then we meet up later. No, no, you're old enough to be alone in town. But this is the city. You two need to stick together. Okay. I guess we can go to your bookstore first, Betty. Maybe they have some comics or something. Yay! Gray Bobby and Betty set off for the corner bookstore while Uncle Gray Billy went to return some things. He had warned them not to talk to strangers and to stay out of trouble. Then he told them to meet back near the fountain at the city square. Gray Bobby and Betty were nearly to the bookstore when suddenly a long leg popped out from around the corner and tripped them. They tumbled and fell into each other before splashing into the water puddle on the sidewalk. What was that? <laughs> that was the funniest thing I've seen in forever. That was Folly Foal, a young donkey who went to school with them. She was a well-known practical joker, and she often thought it was funny to cause people problems. Oh, it's you, Folly. What are you doing here? I live here, just right over there in that townhouse, and I just love to watch everyone go by and fall. <laughs> That's not very nice. It's just a joke, Gray Bobby. But hey, I can be nice. Come on, come on. I'm really sorry we got off on the wrong foot. To make it up to you, I'll show you around town. Come on, follow me. Gray Bobby and Betty weren't sure at all whether they should follow Folly Foal. They discussed it in harsh whispers, but finally decided that they'd be polite. They let Folly show them around a few places, and then they'd head to the shops that they wanted to go to. Folly led them first to a nice upscale store called The Cordial Swan. It was owned by a very pompous swan named Dietrich. Now, Dietrich isn't the nicest person on the block, but if you greet him with a duck call, he's a lot nicer. Really? Sure. Give it a try. It'll really put a smile on his face. Well, I do have a pretty good duck call. Here I go. Hey, Dietrich! <laughs> Gray Bobby's duck call did not put a smile on Dietrich's face. Gray Bobby had never seen someone so angry. Is he some kind of joke? Some uncouth jackanap thinking he can disgrace poor old Dietrich because I was once an ugly duckling? I spit at you. I spit at you twice. Now out! Get out of here! Get out of here! Out. <laughs> Dietrich slammed the door in Gray Bobby's face leaving he and Betty stunned. But Folly Fole just laughed her braying laugh. <laughs> Hee-haw, that was so funny. <laughs> I got you guys. Hee-haw. Folly? I thought you said he liked duck calls. Did I? Oh, no. He doesn't like them at all. In fact, he was called an ugly duckling as a child. Why did you make me hurt his feelings, Folly? It's just a joke. It's funny. Come on, Dietrich isn't nice to anyone. He deserved it. Okay, 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 okay. That's the last joke I'll play, I promise. Now come on, I'll show you the rest of the town. I don't know, Folly. We have to get back to our shopping and meet up with our Uncle Greed Billy. But Folly insisted. So they went along with her to her next stop. It was a local restaurant. Let's all have dessert. I'm buying. Gray Bobby and Betty didn't want to trust her, but... A free dessert sounded really good, so they agreed. Now there's always a bit of a wait, but I have a secret code name I give them so they know to give us the next available table. Just give them the name Opans. First name Ivan. Got it? Gray Bobby gave the host the name and went to sit down with Betty. After a few minutes, Folly excused herself to visit the nearest restroom. Her hands were a little dirty and she needed to wash them. But just as they were leaving, the host called their name. Oh, Pants, 
Ivan no pants. Ivan no pants. Hey everybody! I've no pants. He's got no pants. I've no pants. The crowd waiting erupted with laughter as the name sounded as if the host were saying, "I've a no pants." The host finally spotted Gray Bobby and Betty, who turned a dozen shades of red. Why you little? With that, Gray Bobby and Betty were kicked out of the restaurant, but not before the host told them they were never allowed to come to the restaurant again. At that moment, Folly returned. Silly Gray Bobby. Folly, that wasn't funny. You keep getting us into trouble. We aren't following you around anymore. Let's go, Betty. Wait, 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 wait. I'm really sorry this time. I don't have a lot of friends. Well, I can see why. I'm really sorry, though. I, I really am. I promise no, no more jokes, no more jokes. Just give me one more chance, pretty, pretty, please, with a cherry on top with extra whip topping, please. Gray Bobby and Betty knew following Folly around probably wasn't the best idea, but they did feel bad for her. She didn't really have many friends, so they agreed to one more stop. That stop led them to a cart where their friend Baker Jake was selling some sweet bread. Aw, oh, hey guys! So glad to see you again! Could I interest you in buying some of my famous holiday sweet bread? We're thinking about it. All right! Let me just run inside and get you a bag. Would you mind watching the cart for me? I'll be right back. Sure, Baker Jake. We'd be happy to help. A smile spread across Follyfold's face. It was a smile that made Gray Bobby and Betty very worried. I can't believe he left you alone with his cart. We've known Baker Jake for a while. Ever since the whole who's a what's it thing. The what's a ma who's it? No, no. The who's a what's it. Eh, never mind. You had to have been there. Baker Jake trusts us. That's why he knew he could leave us in charge while he stepped away. Well, his loss, I guess. What do you mean? Have you never eaten stolen bread? No, and we don't intend to start now. Ooh, are you missing out? Regular sweet bread is so yummy, but when you steal it, oh, it's so much better. You should really give it a try. No, we won't. That's not the right thing to do. You two are so lame. Do you really think Jack's gonna miss one loaf of sweet bread? It's Baker Jake, and that's how he makes his money. So, no! Suit yourself. But I'm taking some anyway. <laughs> Gray Bobby and Betty tried to stop her, but Folly Foal was too quick. She grabbed the sweet bread and started to run away, but she wasn't quick enough to escape the clutches of Lieutenant Malloy. Stop right there, you thieving filly. I'm a foal. You're a thief is what you are. You and your friends here are under arrest. Wait, Officer Malloy, you, you know us. Do you really think we would steal from Baker Jake? We were trying to stop her. It's Lieutenant Malloy. You must know my brother who works one town over. Or my other brother who works as a park ranger. Or my other brother who became a mime. We don't talk about him much. But anyway, I don't know you guys from Adam, so you're under arrest. Wait a minute, Officer. Gray Bobby and Betty are my friends. I know they'd never steal from me. So if they say it was just the foal, it was just the foal. Gray Bobby and Betty thanked Baker Jake and explained to him and Lieutenant Malloy what all had happened. Baker Jake didn't press charges. Instead, Lieutenant Malloy took Folly to her parents and made her explain everything she had done. Just about that time, Uncle Gray Billy showed up. It took some time to bring him up to speed. You know, Grey Bobby and Betty, I realize that Folly isn't a stranger, but I thought you'd be wiser than to follow Folly's lead. We really wanted to get away from her. Yeah, but we feel really bad. She doesn't have any friends. You know, there's a proverb in that favorite proverbs book that comes to mind. It goes like this. The woman Folly is loud. She's seductive and knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house. She takes a seat on the highest places of the town calling to those who pass by, who are going straight on their way. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. And to him who lacks sense, she says, stolen water is sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. What does that mean? It means, Grey Bobby, that if you don't know the difference between wisdom and foolishness, you will be made to look like a fool, or worse, you'll be accused of stealing. We both knew it was wrong. We tried to stop her. I know, Betty. And Baker Jake knows too. 
Foolishness is bound up in our hearts, but the Lord teaches us wisdom. When the Holy Spirit lives in someone's heart, He helps them know what is the way of wisdom and what is the way of folly. The more you listen to wisdom, the easier it becomes to know what foolishness sounds like. Now, speaking of ways, let's be making our way home. What did we learn today? We learned that if we follow foolish people, we can end up looking like a fool as well. We learn that following foolishness sends us down the wrong path. But we also learn that Jesus teaches us wisdom through His Word and by His Spirit. And the more we know and live by that wisdom, the easier it is to know the difference between what is wise and what is foolish. Let's pray. Dear Lord, help us to know the difference between foolishness and wisdom. Put your wisdom in our hearts that we may know the correct way to bring glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To dive deeper into the truths of this episode with discussion questions, follow us on social media. You can find us on Instagram at Gray Bobby Bedtime Devotionals. That's Gray Bobby with an E. Now let's quiet our minds and our hearts with a good night song. Now hear the Lord's blessing over you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face towards you and give you His peace. Amen. Hey, Mom and Dad. If you want each week's new devotional automatically sent to your podcast downloads, be sure to subscribe. See you next week.